All right. Hello and welcome to another installment of GameRT's uh, Twitch program, Roundtable Roundtable, where we bring together several librarians and get a chance to chat about games, libraries, games and libraries, and all the ways we can bring play into our spaces. Today, we are going to be talking about Zine Month and Zine Quest. Uh, first, I am Molly Porter, my pronouns are she, her, and I am the adult and teen services librarian at the West Feliciana Parish Library in St. Francisville, Louisiana, as well as the current GameRT event programming co-chair. I've brought some friends along with me uh, for this venture, so please introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Russell Brandon. I'm the data services librarian at Fant Memorial Library um, at, in Columbus, Mississippi at the Mississippi University for Women. I'm also the director at the Cawson Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, so we've been doing a lot of exploring with games in academia. Also in academia, I am Danielle Costello. My pronouns are she, her. I am a research and instruction librarian at the University of Georgia, where I teach library instruction and try to bring games and play into our programming. I am also the president-elect for the Games and Gaming Roundtable. So it is my responsibility upcoming. And I am Rebecca Strang. I am a children's services librarian at Naperville Public Library in Illinois. And I am the current past president of GameRT. And I chair our strategic planning committee. And I'm on our programming committee and our grant committee, uh, all the committees all the time. And yes, I love games. <laughs> you collect all the committees like Pokemon. Yes, got to collect yeah. them all. <laughs> Okay, so thank you all. This event is being held live. However, if you need to leave or you'd like to watch it again, a Twitch video on demand will be accessible right after we end. If you aren't following GameRT on Twitch already, please give us a follow so you can learn more about the intersection of libraries and games. Links for all the places you can find us, like our blog, Facebook, or Discord, will be posted in chat, so please check those out as well. For anyone not previously familiar with GameRT, we are the Games and Gaming Roundtable of the American Library Association. Our mission is to promote gaming and libraries, whether it's programming, collection development, community building, prototyping, playtesting, or research. Uh, a quick word about our upcoming events before we launch into this discussion. Um, first and foremost, tomorrow is our Shadow Dark RPG series, part three. Um, if you have tuned in for the first two parts, you know that this is fabulous. If you haven't, I highly encourage going back and watching those and joining us tomorrow. Um, this will be a very special, uh, um, oh man, my brain session? just broke. Yes, that's the word, special session, um, because we are uh, adding an extra hour for questions, uh, discussing how you can bring not just Shadow Dark, but all kinds of longer form TTRPGs into your library spaces. Um, it promises to be a really fabulous time and I hope I can see you all there uh, and answer all of your questions. Uh, next is the March Minicon, uh, which we are super excited about. Our theme this year is building character uh, and that can be across a ton of different kinds of games, uh, not just TTRPGs. Our submission deadline is February 25th and our uh, conference itself will be held on March 29th. A link for the submission uh, form will be posted in the chat. Thank you all. I hope you all come, whether you are presenting for us or just watching. It also promises to be a fabulous time. Uh, so that said, let's talk about Zine Quest. I don't have a fun pitch for this because I've just said a lot of things, except that Zine Quest is fabulous. So please, all of you. A quest for zines. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what it is, like right? It. It's yeah. A, yeah. it's a facilitated. Uh, so, I mean, in any circumstance, I feel like zines get brought up as this great way to uh, provide kind of publishing access to people, mm -hmm. and so this is something that a lot of crowdfunding sites have uh, embraced. I mean, as an opportunity for them, but also as an opportunity to allow. Uh, a broader reach for audiences. So it's kind of like um, um, starting a zine in your hometown, but being able to amplify that um, to a broader TTRPG community. Um, and then also, I mean, if you're not making zines, it's a great opportunity to see the huge, absolutely huge variety of game materials, uh, rules, games themselves, 
uh, just basically it's the, if you're interested in making zines, it's never too late to start. And one of the best ways to start is to start reading and acquiring zines. Yes, Danielle is showing us all of her fabulous zines. Own oh, Rebecca too. Yeah. <laughs> Building on what Russell said, uh, one of the, I think, brilliant parts about Zine Quest is that it is an opportunity and a challenge for people who want to create games, who are excited by the idea of creating games, but are like, ah, oh, no, I'm not a designer, or that seems like a super hard, like, oh, no, that's like hundreds of pages and thousands of words. It is a very um, good entry point into building and designing. It is a community that are uplifting everybody to try and make and create in this world in this way. And there is really uh, a mind boggling bevy of different <laughs> themes, different tones, different mechanics that you're using. You don't, you can just make a 5e resource. You can just make a non, um, uh, a, uh, a system agnostic resource you can make your like whatever you want to make encompasses this it's like just a challenge to make and to put it out there into the world where people can also uh, access and acquire those uh you know like what is in your head as well now with zine quest it did start on kickstarter and is still the zine quest by itself that title is a, kind of branded with kickstarter but Sometimes people like Kickstarter does occasionally things that we don't agree with um, and the community is pushed back, but there's also zine month that happens as well. Uh, Zemo is another phrase in our resource doc. We have links to both zine quest and Z month, but zine quest was kind of the first thing that started. So we're talking about that. And also we have so many shenanigans that we're looking at and exploring in that <laughs> sphere as well. Yeah. And just bouncing off some of the stuff Danielle was saying, I think one of my favorite things for creators, even if you haven't designed games and you don't want to design a full game, you can make zines for supplements for games. Like maybe it's just character ideas or it's a setting or it's just art for a specific adventure or something. You can be super creative in what you put in your zine uh, <laughs> and share it with the community. <laughs> I like the Vanna White action that's happening. <laughs> Hopefully I have a game for every discussion point. We'll see. Yeah, I might have sure. to speed off into my other room. I was trying to be very good about my bookcase. Um, that's one of, I think, another exciting thing is zines are also, I had a huge amount, but they're ex more accessible for a lot of reasons. One, because the price point for zines is generally less than really any big, you know, kind of broad system book because it's um they're handmade they're like not all the time like there is there are handmade ones and then there are more kind of uh published like, like book glossy ones yep there we go oh, you can man of for me excellent yay <laughs> uh, it really is like the form factor can be whatever <laughs> is accessible for both the publisher as well as the uh people that want to get them i also love that it, you can access lots of different communities as well there are um, so the traditional pro publishing process, as librarians know, can be a difficult one to get into, to get started with, to get your book out there, to get it within a collection. With scenes, a lot of people are building from a wide array of communities, so you can really build your kind of TTRPG collection to be much more diverse than what is out there in traditional publishing land. And a lot of creators, in addition to offering, obviously, like the physical content, a lot of them also offer digital content. So if you just want to grab a PDF or maybe you like the process of building zines yourself, you can buy the PDF and print it out yourself and make the make all of your zines handmade if you wanted to by your own hand. But there are a lot of options when it comes to acquiring zines. Which one is that, Danielle? So this is Hot Goss. It's about nice. gossip. And of course, it's a beautiful, gorgeous, this one I didn't make at all, but <laughs> is kind of like to showcase that these are like, it's very easy to like go from a sheet of paper and do the zine fold, fold, cut, very accessible to for any kind of, uh, if you're doing maker programs or creative spaces, that kind of thing, where or book binding or book making, this would definitely go into a program like that as well to just be like, oh, we're going to highlight zines, but also let's make our own zines. For sure. And I like, one of the things that I like 
the most about Zine Month is that it gives a chance for creators who are making smaller projects that might normally have slipped through the cracks for a lot of people. Um, it gives them a chance to say, here's my project. You are already looking at this particular space, looking for things like this. So, you know, gives them more visibility and it helps me to find things that I would definitely have missed personally. There were, there was, I think it originally was in October and got moved to February, which was a big, like, oh gosh, because we're, I thought it was February and it was moved Fe to August and now it's back yeah. to February. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There it is. There it is. That that's the history. Thank you everyone for reminding yeah. me. It, I remember it was difficult because that's one of the things is being a part of the title of Zine Quest, that name recognition, like a lot of people are looking forward to that yearly. And so that uplifts a lot of marginalized voices as well to be part of that like oh i'm looking through all these i'm scrolling through oh i found a name that i've never known before but now i will follow that person for forever because a lot of these are also i'm um, not just in um the, like you find them on the kickstarter but then you go to itch.io or drive through ttrpg right. and then you see oh wait they have an entire body of work and it's gorgeous and wonderful to you know have a larger collection mm -hmm. And it's awesome on the creator side of things, too. I'm in a few different design groups where people focus on making zines. And it's just awesome to see all of the different creators supporting each other, whether it's like backing their projects or giving feedback on their layout or helping them with ideas. It's just a really great community building um, time. <laughs> and if you... Oh. No, go ahead. Go no, ahead. if you are trying to figure out what to do beyond Dungeons and Dragons, what to do beyond kind of maybe I don't like Dungeons and Dragons, the dragon game takes up so much space when we're talking about what TTRPGs are, but you know, like like not every book is going to be, you know, George R. R. Mart George R. R. Yeah, blah, I can't speak. It's not gonna be Song of Ice and Fire. There's going right. to be more books out in the entire world. There's going to be more video games than Call of Duty. You know right. they exist. Going to a zine quest, exploring the authors and designers there, like that's what really opened me up to the world of indie TTRPG, to little one-page, sh one one-shot RPGs, to all this kind of beautiful um, uh, variety and bevy of just exciting things. Like This is the good, easy way to jump into the world of every other TTRPG there is out there. Yeah, and some of them, uh, some of the zines that come out aren't themselves games, but are just having to do with the gaming community. Like last year, I backed um, the Rolling with Youth zine, mm -hmm. which is just a zine all about how to run TTRPGs for kids. And this year, um, TTRPG Kids has a zine about how to make games for your kid, like mm -hmm. for a specific kid. So there's a links, lot of links, like links. youth and educate it's in our resource document um Which if you have not it? looked at our resource doc i'm going to link it in twitch chat it's very again fabulous. if i can spell <laughs> um but our resource doc is full of our recommendations for what to look at in this year's zine month as well as stuff that several of us backed in previous years um so the ttrpg kids one for this year, the title um, under zines to check out is, um, is it making a tabletop RPG making, for your particular kid? Yeah, making a tabletop yeah, okay. RPG for your particular kid. That's the TTRPG oh. kids one. I missed that. How can I? That's a thing I think yeah. that is the fun, most fun part is talking to your friends about the zines they're excited about because there's so many that are being created now mm -hmm. that you can miss one very, very easily. I think we all shared what we've backed um, on Kickstarter. It was like, oh, surprise, not very much overlap, but it's like, but now I want that one. And that For sure. one. Well, that one. and that one you may have missed because it's not on Kickstarter, it's on mm. Crowdfunder. Oh, fantastic. So they have a zine month, uh, zine month support really? tag as well. Okay. So yeah, and that's a good point. Um, Definitely look at the other uh, platforms for crowdsourcing, as well as itch.io has a couple of crowdsourcing potential. I, I don't know if it's a proper crowdsourcing, but people use it to crowdsource in a interesting way. I haven't looked too much into it, but there's more than just Kickstarter for these events. And sometimes um, somebody will just do it on their uh, own social medias and say, this is, I'm making it for the month, but not affiliated with.
I just want to highlight something that you just, you know, we're both just talking about, especially in thinking about uh, the sort of, you know, do I want to make my own zine or do I want to find a zine is that, um, you know, the real benefit of like having this event is that you get those related or tangential zines, those those things that are instructions or methods. Yeah. Um, and so I think a really important thing to remember is that um, just because a, you know, a huge a preponderance of the zines that are being provided are game focused as far as materials go, and that we as librarians have a great leg up in terms of thinking about how to situate programming and uh and basically coordinate events that would actually play these zines mm -hmm. and so like on you know you're not only getting the games to play you're also you know providing an opportunity for people who've played the games or facilitated the games or made the games to actually make you know meta zines about mm -hmm. those things um which i think there are you know, and again, and just thinking about that sort of question of, oh, okay, I've learned about zine month. How do I involve myself? So, you know, looking at the zines, discovering new things, and then beyond that, looking at things that you've already done that you can adapt in the same format, um, I think is a really good opportunity to kind of think about that and especially to get those sorts of more of those sorts of zines out. Because it would be really interesting to see a zine. Uh, that's related to adult programming, related mm -hmm. to TTRPGs, or again, that game creation component um, as far as zines go. And again, that idea being that, you know, zine is not a content focused thing. It is a format. And again, that idea of just getting that thing done and getting it out to people um, is one of the real sort of motivational parts mm -hmm. of like having this sort of event. And to build off of that, one thing we can do with um, zines is realize there's entire zine culture that exists in a lot of different cities that is a potential um, a group of patrons that you're either not meeting or can partner with. If you don't know how to do zines, if you don't know as much about the history, you can set up, you know, uh, a talking series. You can have somebody from the local community come and help lead that. It's a great chance to build more partnership with different areas of our community. And again, everybody, more more friends for playing is always a good thing. Yeah, I see in our Twitch chat uh, a little bit winch i don't know that i'm saying that properly i'm so sorry if i'm not um has also pointed out something that we haven't touched on yet which is that while like a normal kickstarter campaign goes for a set like usually around 28 or 29 days something like that um that the zine quest uh, projects on Kickstarter are closer to around two weeks. It's much shorter and they launch at different points. So some of them started like February 1st. Some of them just launched today, I think. Mm -hmm. And there are still some that haven't launched yet. Um, one of them that they mentioned is actually one that's also on our resource doc. Heads up, check out our resource doc. It's real cool. Um, <laughs> and it's HAC Tapestry. Hick Tapestry? I don't know. Yep. Uh, toilet Roll Paper. Uh, it game. looks so yeah. cool. It really I, I does. I agree with you, Lily Bet. It was yeah. one of the first ones I saw because I am always after a unique kind of game, like game form factor, anything that's a little different. I love the Misfit Toys and that mechanic of using toilet paper or a sturdy roll to play mm -hmm. your game, but also connecting it to history too, but also toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> and drawing like I love a weird mechanic and it makes me so happy that's there uh and that's the thing there is a just I, I say I think we keep saying this and we'll probably say it like at least you know take a shot every time we say it there's a lot there's so much there really is there's a ton and I mean do y'all want to talk about some of them that we are excited about I was yeah, just gonna I think... say we definitely should I want yeah. to show off a resource that I really like for looking up zine month stuff and maybe we can just like round robin talk about for some sure. of our favorite stuff so Absolutely. in twitch chat I'm going to put the link for this and I'm going to share my screen um to show this off because it is pretty cool um it's the zine month database basically but you can look up different 
projects. And one thing I like about the site is that you can just start searching for the title of a zine that you're looking for. But if you just kind of want to browse, you can look at the different formats um, that people have tagged their creations with. You can also look at the platform and it'll, t you know, you can look at whether it's on Kickstarter, Itch, Crowdfunder, or Backerkit. Or you can filter by all of these different tags, uh, whether it's a, like a thematic tag or a system tag, and then the status if it's, you know, mm -hmm. if it's live right now, if it's upcoming, if it's ended, you can filter by all that stuff, or you can just start scrolling forever and <laughs> look at everything that's in there. So um, but Molly, do you want to uh, throw me a name to look up first? Oh goodness. Okay. Pressure's on. Go, go, go. Um, hmm. One that I am super excited about because I know this creator and their work is fabulous is No Nazis in Valhalla. Is that it... one is not in here, but it's on Kickstarter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on Kickstarter. All right, we'll just we'll just go there really quick. Let me move my Zoom controls. Yeah. Alrighty. So what do you like about this one? I really, I love the NSR, so the new, hold on, I'm sorry. Instead of OSR being like mm -hmm. old school revival, NSR being like new school revival oh. um, style. I just realized that I shouldn't be throwing letters out without saying what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but that one seems so cool to me. Um, Wes is a great game designer and has written uh, supplements for Morkborg in the past. Um, and so this one is Grindcore. It's different than Morkborg, but it has a similar kind of vibe. Um, and the art is by, oh, I cannot remember the name of the artist off the top of my head. It's written in there somewhere, but their art is super great. Um, and I think this is just gonna be a really great book. Also, Wes is an amateur bookbinder. So like they are bringing great attention to detail to this project and I'm very excited for it. I was trying to find the artist name really quick, but I'm not seeing it on the- I'm gonna find it somewhere. Page. I'll find it, give me a second. Um, while Molly's looking for that, Danielle, do you want to throw me a title? Yeah, uh, so I was really uh, intrigued by Tape, T-A-P-E, an RPG about connection. Oh. That one's not here, but it's on Kickstarter. Yeah, on Kickstarter. Yeah, it's a little one, and it might actually, I'm looking at it, they could be done with um, all their pledges, but hopefully they will have a um, link to be able to get the... Uh, um blah 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 they uh, still have 16 days to go yeah but they're all like look at the right side uh for your uh backing it it's all kind of done or maybe it just like they've hit that... their goal but they yeah. you can still back it for 16 oh. days okay i'm maybe i'm just confusing because i'm looking at my <laughs> thing because i did back it <laughs> <laughs> there it is tech issues i like that it was two players uh sometimes it is hard to get a large group of people to play a thing i have a wife thankfully and so i can do two player games all the time as long as she is uh cool with whatever i'm jamming with it is a very light uh rules light rpg i'm always a fan of not having i want to just get into play and i want to start playing and i want to start exploring but in this one we are building um uh to, to, to playlists together and it's using the form like a completely like instead of dice or instead of a luck mechanic we're using playlist or spotify or maybe a youtube playlist to communicate and i think that's just the coolest thing ever is to how do we communicate without words how do we express ourselves without being able to talk is one of those things that i and you're role playing so role playing inherently feels like you should be talking to each other but you're not so we're going to do something else and it kind of breaks the idea of what is game and what is ttrpg to TTRPGs to me, it's like, what can you do with them instead of what we normally think of that? And so I was I was a big fan. And it's also awesome. little. And it makes me yeah. like really happy that you don't have to do high level graphics. You don't have to have a ton of rules. You can have a really simple idea and roll with it and be like, 
oh, here's what I want to show in the world. I also appreciate they said what their um, uh, kind of uh, design inspirations for um, are. Uh, that's kind of in Y tape. And I think that's really cool. Um, a lot of designers, I think this is very common, share their inspirations, share where they're getting their ideas from. So that way you can also look at those and see if that's also something like a kind of reader's advisory, read alike. And yeah, this one I was really excited about. Awesome. That one does sound really cool. I'll have to bookmark that for myself. <laughs> Real quick, I'm going to uh, say the name of that artist, yes. which is Michael York Gilreath. Yay! Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway, go ahead. Russell, do you have a title you'd like me to pull up? So we might have already talked about this type of zine, but um, a lot of the ones that I'm supporting are aden uh, appendices. I don't know, call them resources oh, for other things. Yeah. So I'm, I'm yeah. back to the uh, the Morkborg Dead Dead Mall. Um, that a one dead looks mall so crawl. good. Yes. Yeah. So um, I think this is a great example mall, again. Mall like shopping mall or mall yeah. like mauling someone mall -like oh, those are mall. two different things <laughs> it's it's a great you know uh more uh co-fits a dead mall dungeon crawl which just feels really good to say um uh, i want to highlight a few things though is that like in general the idea being that um you know you have so many different routes to kind of start your zine quest as far as that goes and that's one of the cool things about that is that if you do already have a game that you play a lot of there's a really good chance that you have a list of 10 NPCs that you've made for a game, or you have a list of items that you use or anything like that. It's a great opportunity to kind of just to put those things together. And also just want to highlight, you know, he's got, uh, it, it's don't evaluate the, you know, those are, I guess, the context for Zine Quest is so great because the highlight is not on getting thousands and thousands of backers. You know, the idea again is sharing this thing. And so I really, you know, just want to emphasize the idea of like, you can take, you know, an IP or I guess not IP, but, or I guess it is an IP, but something like Mork Borg that is pretty popular um, and just focus on making something that maybe you reach like 47 people, or maybe you reach like, 100 people or something like that. The focus is mainly on giving people that opportunity for that first step um, again. And so, uh, and, and the collaboration component to that, again, I, being able to kind of cross post those things really creates that sort of vibrancy in the, in the community. Yeah, it is nice. There's a lot of uh, indie RPGs that have system resource documents, SRDs, that you can use to um, create original content for those games with permission from the creators to do that, which is really nice. Um, I just love every uh, Morkborg, like all the graphic <laughs> art it's... for for all of these is really great. Yeah, Morkborg art is in a its own realm of <laughs> fabulous. Um, so I'm gonna pull up. This is our resource document, by the way. Uh, just if you haven't looked at it, go look at it. But it's got our bios. It's got a bunch of fun links and articles um, for for the librarians and people who super love libguides out there. We have this non gaming zine resources, and there's like I don't know ten ish libguides in there about how to make zines or libraries that have zine collections. So take a look at those. Um, I'm gonna pull up. Witch's Cat. Ooh, I thought you'd like that A solo one. journaling RPG. I thought of you with this one, too. <laughs> I am so excited for this because I backed it for the tier so that my cat can be in the game. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. Which I'm That's super, like. super excited about. Um, and I've backed um, things from this creator before, so I'm. that's another reason why I'm excited about this mm -hmm. one. But in this one, you're the cat. You're the magical companion to a witch. And um, it uses tarot cards for prompt, uh, generating prompts. And you're just, you know, this little feline navigating a, a magical world and trying That's to help out your guy. witch the best that you can. <laughs> but I... it looks so adorable. And I've just been really liking um, solo journaling games lately so i'm super super excited for this one it looks like a lot of fun it is and nice the art that looks awesome 
there are so many different mechanics to yeah. be able to explore because I know that there are definitely ones that I'm like, mm, I'm not a fan of too complicated. Oh, look, there is 30 light for me. Perfect. And then, oh, there are people who love crunchy. Hello, there, there are zines for you too. So like whatever suits your fancy, whatever your patrons also want. Like this is a really great way to showcase the breadth of the hobby, like both like in zines, but also in tabletop role playing and role playing. Like that, you know what? Like if Rebecca, if you go to the uh, section uh, and get Sentai and Sensibilities, yeah. Like if you yeah. don't want to play a high fantasy, high stakes adventure, instead you want to play a Regency <laughs> drama, but with a tiny twist of being your Sentai Ranger. Just a little tiny one. <laughs> Just a tiny twist. Uh, <laughs> this one is by uh, Ninth Level Games, I believe. Yes. Who uh, we also love, love, love. Yes. We love them so much. But this combo that's so smart and so clever, it's like, I, I love it to pieces. And I love being able to do Regency. I love the fact that we don't have to live in, you know, the fantasy that is, you know, like, uh, kind of medieval English fantasy instead we could have a fantasy in Regency yeah <laughs> Sent like I don't even know what universe that is <laughs> it's like I guess Power Rangers fantasy universe maybe yeah. their history <laughs> who knows just, Regency Power Rangers I just love to be in some of their meetings sometimes like how these yeah. ideas get mashed together for um, sure and so many of their zine month zines have been fabulous yeah, I was just grabbing because I backed theirs last year. Uh, Pigeons Eleven, like that one Beavers, sounds so good. Yes. Do crime, <laughs> um, and they both last year's and this year's both use their polymorph system, which mm -hmm. we've played some of their games on our stream before. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really easy to learn system and mm -hmm. a lot of fun. But I'm gonna scroll yeah. down because some of the art in here oh, is it's gorgeous. Great. It's so good. God, like, so <laughs> I would like I would like to emphasize that. You know, this made me realize I was like, oh my gosh, Rita Repulsa is ready for the ball. Like, yes. she's always got the dress for that. So, this makes perfect sense. Like, it, does. it really does fit. Oh, oh man, look at that jacket. Honor, etiquette, footwork. Oh, come on. And, hero. <laughs> and you know, the Darcy, you know, the Bridgerton, like, diamond most eligible for is sure. always going to be the Green Ranger. Green Ranger is best. <laughs> oh. So and like the I love that you can lean in both the lore of all this kind of literature and so connecting it back to libraries, you can definitely dive into Bridgerton's very popular, season three is gonna be coming out. You can dive into all of the, you know, very popular, you know, uh types of Regency novels, but you can also lean into the fact that like a lot of people love, nostalgically love, love, love the Power Rangers franchise. And so together you can have this really interesting, wild combo. Also, if I said like I 100%, like toss this program out, we're going to do Sentai and Sensibilities. <laughs> Everybody's going to be like, what is going on? <laughs> and again, connecting two possibly different groups that didn't Definitely. know they want to hang out with each other. Yeah, for sure. Also, if you ask people to wear costumes, I mean, come on, this is like the perfect thing because that's become for me when I'm running programs for uh, a lot of my games programs at my library are for teenagers. And every time they have an opportunity to wear some kind of costume, they pounce on it. Even if I didn't say, oh, it's costume day, they show up in costume and it's my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? what the costumes would be glorious. for Sentai and Sensibility. You need to do oh this. Gosh. You need to I run really this do. program. It's going to be <laughs> glorious, Molly. I think they'll love it, honestly. And if you want to roll with kind of this idea, like this is a great kind of jumping off point for if we were going to be making zines ourselves, like what other two different things can we mash up together? Can you, yeah. you know, like for your like younger patrons, can you mash up, you know, Taming of the Shrew and let's pick a piece of Gundam wing, you know, boop, let's go. Right. <laughs> Gundam Wing Taming of the Shrew. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Oh, man. Oh, good. Blade Runner okay. meets Midsummer's Night Dream. I don't know. I'd, I'd play that like immediately. Oh, man. So, 
Private Pokemon, never on. mind. We've got it. We've got it. <laughs> That's your scene quest, friend. That's the one. We're going to look for it next year. Yes, please. Okay. So, yeah, if I could highlight another one, maybe. Yeah. Um, I really want to talk about Thrifty Trades of Fae. Yes. Oh, this was gorgeous. Really looking forward to this one. So this is launched today, I think. Oh, I've been waiting. Yeah, so have I. Um, this game, this scene, I should say, looks so great uh, for so many reasons. I love the poop out of the fact that it's got one of the little fortune tellers mm-hmm. um oh, so smart. and of course you wouldn't know what i'm talking about if i don't do the silly hand motions but um it's right here on the screen they yeah a nice exactly <laughs> oh i'm just mocking myself that's it. all <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i love that it has the kind of tactile element to it um and i'm pretty sure that a printable version of it is included in the digital file um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to back at the physical level to get the fun fortune teller. Um, but another reason why I love this is because, look, they've got a cat peeking out. Come on. There is. Yep. Another We're reason. Sell. <laughs> yes. Give us cat. I mean, Just give us cat. oh man, y'all. Oh, I love that this can be dropped into a pre-existing campaign um, mm-hmm. because that's something that totally works for me personally. Because, like I said, I'm running a lot of my games programs for the teenagers at my library. I have a D&D campaign that I've been running for a year and a half now. And it's really fun, but I run out of ideas a lot. <laughs> and so sometimes I need something to just like put in there, you know, because mm-hmm. if you've played games with, I mean, with anyone, but especially with people who are like, 14 years old they ask for everything to be a new npc Mm -hmm. and so like this gives you some of those this gives you things that you can find in the shop um i'm really excited about it and i think that because this is one that i am backing at the physical level they can see how the things are made and then they will get excited and think oh maybe i can make something like that myself um so i'm very excited for this one oh it looks so cool Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, yeah, Molly, is this one specifically a supplement or is it its own game as well? I, let me see. I'm going to pull it up right here. It's a supplement. It's system yeah. free. Okay. So yeah. yes. you can wedge it in. <laughs> yeah, see, I like that both, like. yeah, we get supplements, but I also like, you can do the same thing with like a little mini game. Like some of these um, scenes are so little and small, like they're kind of closer to a one page or a um, like a micro uh, TTRPG. And those work as well too. Um, not scene quest, but sealed library has, have you heard the mm-hmm. beast? Yeah. And I love using that when I'm ever I'm at a tavern. It's like, okay, we're going to play another little game. And it, it's so nice to have games interlocking together and kind of, I feel most players don't care that Dungeons and Dragons, it's what they hear. So it's like, oh yeah, I want to play Dungeons and Dragons. Like really, they just want to role play and story tell. So right. once yeah. you get them past the Dungeons and Dragons, like, here you go. Like you've been doing Molly. It's like, let's have some more shenanigans. Exactly. Yeah. I experienced that when I started uh, the kids RPG club at my library, like, at our first session, they're like, yeah, we're going to play Dungeons and Dragons. And me and the person that I run it with are like, no, we're never playing Dungeons and Dragons. And <laughs> we play a different game every month. And they do not, they've never asked for Dungeons and Dragons since, <laughs> like, there's so much good stuff out there. Yeah. Um, Russell, did you have another that you wanted to highlight? Russell, share, share. Uh, mainly Morkborg. Um, I it's these aren't projects that so zine quest led me to some supplements for the game lancer which is like a mech rpg that mm. i so just want to highlight that um to what i think danielle what everybody's mentioned numerous times is like finding that author and then looking back at what they've already done or kickstarter projects that they've already like have concluded a lot of the time You can order those things because a lot of them are digital content. Again, this promotion of the idea that, you know, a lot of these smaller game companies that are doing um, these projects, 
they have those things, I mean, not archived, they become a part of the store. And so it's a great way um, to find that sort of network of um, of those things. And I do, I do want to highlight that um, the tags as far as um, uh, zine quest are concerned on places like itch.io, um, like Black Box Games is doing a special on itch uh, because they're releasing zine quest. Um, thing so black box games on hio um huge number of like dungeon supplements and things like that so mm -hmm. um but uh oh yeah. and before um that made me think if you miss something if you're late if you don't There's have no money space. do not worry do not despair because a lot of these folks are it's being published there's usually a backer kit that's kind of post or if there's not backer kit you can still find them on itch on uh, drive through look up their name they usually within the kickstarter have a link to go find their stuffs so while it is fun to get it into zine quest and into kind of the joy of so many zines kind of like collapsing and falling on top of me and i'm just smothered in them it also is <laughs> we can manage our expectations we can also just kind of share too like do a consortium of zines and like Le sure. rebecca will collect in cats and yeah. russell will collect in morkboard <laughs> and lancer and i'll collect in nonsense and molly collect in delightful things <laughs> and then we all play together Yay. yes um well, i, I actually want to highlight oh, really quick um this was not released as like official zine month, but this is from mm. a creator that I really like. And this, uh, I think they published this like just a couple days before February started, but Wither and Grove uh, from Junk Food Games looks super cool. I love the art in all of their games and I love that. they just make like really lovely, easy to get into games. And this one looks really pretty. Um, so I just wanted to highlight this one really quick, too. Yeah, that looks really great. I do love yeah. all of the solo games that are coming out as part of Zine Quest 2 mm -hmm. and Zine Month. Um, yeah, for sure. But I think that based on the comment Danielle just made about how it's totally okay if you can't get all of the things all at once right now, that's a good jumping off point for talking about previous years of Zine Month. And there are so many projects that we love from previous years that like I didn't buy at the time, but I found them now. And we've played some of them on our stream. Uh, the one that I think we've played the most on the stream is I'm sorry, did you say Street Magic, which you can buy through itch.io. And um, that's a super fun one, but that was part of Scene Quest. Um, so yeah, there are so many really great games uh, and resources that are now available even though they were put out in this like specific kind of format yeah one of the things i like to look for during zine month because i run a kids uh rpg club like i already mentioned the rolling with youth that i backed last year and the ttrpg kids ones for this year but there was an adventure last year uh, or a game last year for specifically developed for kids called Star Gems. Ooh. Um, it's a TT RPG for ages four plus. Uh, so that's like just one of the like specific things that I like to look for. And it's a pretty thing with tables and all the stuff you need to run the game, but fun stuff. There's so many. Where should I start? Um, <laughs> here's one I haven't showcased before. So uh, what happened at Wyvern Rock is about bringing strangeness into kind of your medieval fantasy world. So the idea that we have cryptids and aliens and conspiracy theories, why wouldn't our medieval fantasy uh, or, you know, kind of person, peasant hanging out not have those kinds of just strange weird sci-fi encounters so it helps to kind of if you like that kind of stuff but also you still want to play more of a uh, fantasy like kind of Dungeons and Dragons thing how do you bring aliens like you know what soft what light through yonder window breaks it yeah. is an alien 
videos and it's a delight and i love it so much it's it's a big chonky thing too like how to add like low encounters high high kind of impact encounters strange uh relationships between like packs and different stuff which is it like imagine the guy who's like aliens built the pyramid but you put him in like a like he's a noble for your you know like people to have to meet and deal with so that's giving that guy way too much power <laughs> yes again the intersections of weird things like i yeah. love something that's just like two places that should not be together now we're meeting them it's good For stuff. Sure. Mm -hmm. i'm just imagining now a matt berry-esque peasant something like there's an extraterrestrial <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that impression today, but it's really oh, well. Really made my day. Russell, now I know what NPC you need to play. <laughs> I apologies to Matt Berry. He's a gift. <laughs> oh goodness! Oh um, man, yes. But... All of the NPCs should just be like normal-looking people that have toothpicks and they're regular human, whatever they are. <laughs> Uh, another one kind of going a different like that um i love supplementals like um just like uh russell likes them and so another one i got was a visitor's guide to the rainy city and this is an almanac of an imaginary place all the different clubs it has old-timey uh, maps it has old-timey ads for things and so it gets you a world and a universe to put into whatever you want to play. And I love that. I love like ha both as a creative kind of um, endeavor, like that they made this and it's beautiful and now I can jump into it. But also as somebody who might want to do Zine Quest, I'm always intimidated by building a system or creating like, oh, something perfect for this other system or how do I express the ideas in my head out there? But this is just lore building. This is just like, hey, I want to talk about like a magical library. I know what a library is. I know all the weirdos that hang out here and are my <laughs> friends. I could just put them into this magical library and here you go, an almanac of wonderful you know shenanigans which would be a delight or i could put the round table Ooh, that might be fun the round table in like fantastical form as a supplement to meta meta life for sure there's another just that i'm thinking about because of the matt berry reference uh one of the ones that i have listed for the previous years is low stakes and I'm going to pull it up and share my screen real fast so you can see what I'm talking about. Because normally I get the digital, so I don't have the fancy things to hang, to hold up in front of y'all. Um, so give me just a second. I want to share the screen. Do, do, do. Okay. So this is inspired by what we do in the shadows. And like all of your silly roommate dramas and things like that. Sometimes you have to reprimand a werewolf. Um, confessional scenes like there are in like reality TV and stuff like that. Um, and it's just a simple sitcom story structure. Silly vampires whose entire lives are just like, oh man, what do I have to get at the store today? And oh no, the roommate left all of the the food in the closet to rot that kind of thing you know um so you know what we do in the shadows nonsense you can be trying to figure out what you yourself are doing in the shadows um, i love so yeah. much that you brought that up molly because i have a variant <laughs> um heaven um has no taste yeah and this is the if you want to play as um um shoot i can't remember the word uh neil gaiman and terry pratchett's uh, good, omens. Oh, good, omens. good omens so if you like that yes. and really any ip is up for grabs so sense yeah. high and sensibilities if you like an ip and you want to explore that there has been a zine quest and somebody exploring how to <laughs> rpg rpgify these experiences is that one on the thing okay i've got to put that on the okay no i mean, it was just in my stack i was going to add my like pretty much everything <laughs> okay. that i'm like bloop, 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 bloop. that looks really great <laughs> yeah also i feel like we would be failing at our jobs as uh librarians if we did not mention outliers which will yes. be coming up uh it'll go live next week but 
it's uh, you play a research assistant and you're like recruiting participants and collecting data and doing all this stuff, but it's designed by um, Sam Lee, Samantha Lee, who also did Anamnesis Ooh, and yeah. Mark Shepard is also involved with it. And uh, they did A Loud Noise in a Quiet Place, which is a game about uh, temporary hearing loss, which is super mm -hmm. cool. But um, I'm going to share really quick. Do, do, do. Um, so this is the Kickstarter page. It is not live yet, so you can't see a lot of information. But if you head over to itch and look up Outliers, you can find a whole bunch of information um, about the game there. And I just love the graphics mm -hmm. and Those are very, the, very cool. you know, the theme and all of that. Um, I'm really oh. excited about this one. So for people who are bringing, um, since you went to the itch page, I want to highlight for our people bringing these zines into the collection, um, yeah. when you're cataloging and you're trying to find the people, mm -hmm. um, a lot of these people will not be in regular traditional publishing. This is like a chance to be the first time they've ever published. So yeah. to find kind of all that uh, metadata itch.io is a great place um, to be able to see where they're keeping their social medias, where they're keeping kind of their professional pages. So that way you can verify this is this person and not another person by the same name and all that good stuff when you're doing, you're going to, you probably are going to have to do some original cataloging for a lot of these. Yeah. yeah. Very good point. Definitely. Yes. And yes, people were already talking about outliers in our chat. Yeah. So yeah. Excellent. What this makes me feel so like good. we need to do is do a uh, game RT directed like uh, game jam for Zine Quest next year and be um, like, "It's funny you say that because people are also mentioning that in our Twitch chat." Let's specifically. go! I love they're you saying all. A, they're saying a game jam for annual, but I don't see why we couldn't do both. <laughs> so, yeah. game jams, game jams, game. We should jams, do a game, game jam for annual. Yes. We should. I mean, I feel game like that's annual. a thing we can do. I mean, in the gaming group, we, at I least, mean, like, hey, this is Game year. Jam Hour. Yeah, we yeah. did last year. So we should just make it an annual thing. For sure. <laughs> All right. It has been decided. Thank you, chat. Yeah. You know, anything else you would like to direct us to? <laughs> to? <laughs> it's very doable. Chat is our own little fortune teller. I'd like to ask everyone on the panel a question. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, if, if you were to start a zine or do this, what do you think would be the easiest thing for you to do in launching a project? And what do you think would be the hardest? And because I asked the question, of course, I was already thinking about it. So I'll go ahead and give some <laughs> sort of bloviated <laughs> answer so y'all have time to Use think. Use the brain <laughs> trust. Um, <laughs> I think the easiest part for me more recently has been, I've started kind of a local, or I didn't actually start it. I've become a part of a group of people that started a, like a local community zine. I think the format would be the easiest part for me because I'd go ahead and restrict myself to one of those single page folded zines and that would yes. make things a lot easier. I think the hardest thing for me to to do would be honestly in starting uh, to pick whether I am doing a supplement or trying to make an entire game um, because either one of those would require that sort of um, that extra component. And I guess if I'm being honest with myself, the hardest part is actually sitting down to do the work <laughs> yeah the kind of hardest part for me would be the kickstarter back-end mechanic shenanigans of like i've never made a kickstarter so how do i make a page that looks attractive because i'd be crushed if my little thing was like oh two people and they're my friends and my wife so <laughs> you know that would be disheartening so how do i make it like actually attractive in a way that's like and conveys what i want like i want people who would potentially get my zine to be able to know that like oh i got the thing that i wanted versus danielle this is not the thing that you you know express like communication is always i think the hardest part for me um to kind of wrap my mind of like all that tech back stuff um and being good at fulfilling like sorry y'all like i got like real life plus like oh now i have to organize <laughs> like how do i send like these Th there are ways to limit how many things you send Mm. Uh, I think kind of the way of mitigating that would be I just make a digital one and we're going to print and then it'd be awesome. And my, you know, like upgrade is like you get to hang out with Game RT. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think 
So I've made zines before. I think like, and I've made both non-game zines and I've made gaming related zines, but the gaming related zines that I've made have all been supplemental, not like designing a full fledged standalone game. I think the, the game. <laughs> I think that like creative process is probably easy for me. And I've made other supplements. Like I was trying to see if I had a copy of the zine that I've made on my desk. I don't, I have copies of like supplemental card, like individual card things that mm -hmm. I've made. So I think that would be easy, but like Danielle, like if I was putting out a physical product that I was making by hand myself, that would be, I think the hardest part, just making sure that you, because you kind of have to anticipate what your bandwidth is going to be before you start your project and limit the number of things that you, like physical rewards that you're going to have the time and wherewithal to, to put out there within the time constraints that you've set for yourself. So never having done a, a project like that myself, I think that would be the hardest thing is just anticipating all of the weird things that come up during production that might slow you down and, you know, accommodating for that. Oh, goodness. I've had so much time to think and my brain is still broken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that the hardest thing for me would be... Um, forcing myself to sit down and start doing something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I am really good at procrastinating y'all um, especially if it's something that I care about or that I feel like close to like emotionally like it's really hard for me to start getting words on a page um, so that's definitely the hardest part for me I think the easiest part is all of the silly ideas that I have to go into it before I have to actually start writing them <laughs> <laughs> like I have a million ideas for things it's just when I have to start getting serious about it I get scared <laughs> so that's what that is yeah I feel like we need to do a team of okay Molly's at the very beginning kind of here so we need a back-end kickstarter person for that part right and it's like a team I, I think the really cool thing is that you know we all have very related sort of I mean because I think I think we could probably all agree that like a lot of the easy things that we all see would be the same sort. Cause yeah, the Kickstarter yeah. component is definitely one of those big backend things. I think one of the huge benefits to having such a diversity of access and sort of content is again, that, you know, remembering that being a part of zine quest is also just getting zines, just mm -hmm, getting yeah. excited about those and, and finding those things to be able to take like Molly, you were talking about, I don't you know, know what you're talking about. <laughs> But you find those zines, and then again, it's kind of one of those like, um, those are like every way you can participate in the, you know, this diffusion of ideas um, is a is a good thing, and kind of being able to sit there and just, I, I think that's probably the reason why I love the energy of zines so much because it's very much nothing to it but to do it, um, in the sense of just like you find you find that thing, and you're just like, okay, I'm either going to push through this thing or I'm going to find this other route to think about stuff For i sure. think if you're not prepared to do zine quest right now what might be good is to do a game jam instead where you're making a single product for your friends like at a like maybe a game maybe we can do a game swap where i'm like molly i really want your idea please give it to me and i will give you this awesome cool idea back <laughs> and that feels like a little like lower that stakes could be fun. yeah hi mayhem as our uh, tagline is to be For able sure. to do <laughs> and from there kind of like oh ugh the act of creating is good in and of itself. Like regardless of like the back end, like, okay, numbers, whatever, like you said, Russell, just making things is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, and if you can collaborate, like you don't have to do this by yourself. If you have folks around you who are interested, like if I was like, yeah, I'm going to do something for, for zine month next year. I would probably be tapping all of you. <laughs> You're like, I need help with these various things. <laughs> Let's Please make something 10, together. Times. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, any final thoughts? No, I just love talking with y'all. This was fun. <laughs> Jam forever. Yeah. Jam forever. Jam, Jam forever. forever. Seed forever. Jam forever. All right. Well, 
thank you, uh, Danielle and Russell and Rebecca, for your shenanigans. Thank all of you on Twitch for watching and joining us. Uh, and uh, thank you for considering even being part of the Zine Quest adventure, uh, the Zine Month adventure. And we look forward to sharing more games and ways you can play. Uh, so to make sure uh, that you get all of those things in the future, follow us uh, in all the usual places. Those links are in the chat. And this has been Roundtable Roundtable with the Games and Gaming Roundtable. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye.